The sidewalk rule. First time posting here, and I chose to start with this story because I recently found some interesting information. I've thought about this incident a lot, and recently decided to look into it and found some unsettling results. It could just be a coincidence, but I think maybe not based on the dates and similarities. Either way, here it goes. It happened on my 8th birthday, June 16th, 1993. I had been pestering my mom, like most little kids do when excited, and she gave me an early present to open so I would play and she'd get things ready for the party without me getting in the way. The party was supposed to start in a few hours, and she was still trying to frost the cake. The toy was a Jurassic Park dinosaur, and I took it to the front yard to play. Our house was just off of a quiet New England road, and we didn't get that much traffic. But all the same, I wasn't allowed on the sidewalk without my mom's permission. The front yard sat atop a stone wall that was a good three to five feet above the sidewalk depending on what part of the lawn one stood. Because of this peculiar detail, my mom couldn't see me if I jumped down to the sidewalk. So it was a rule that I always asked to ask to play there. Otherwise, it was off limits. It was a well-established rule. I wasn't outside very long when a man in a station wagon stopped on the side of the road. He must have seen the sign and balloons my mom had put out to help people find her house. Because though I had never seen him before, he called me over to wish me a happy birthday. He asked me a lot of questions. Each time I answered, he would ask me to come closer so he could hear me better. Each question, he would coast his car closer to the corner of the lawn, where the wall was lowest. He asked me how, how old I, I, I was, how many kids were coming to my birthday party, and if there were any special presents I was hoping to get. I showed him the dinosaur tour I had, and told him how much I liked it, and talked about everything I knew about dinosaurs, which at the time was quite a lot. At this point, I was standing right on the edge of the stone wall, at the far corner, where the drop is only about three feet to the sidewalk, and he had pulled his car over so far, his wheel was up on the curb. He must have known it was a quiet road, because he clearly didn't worry about getting stopped for his car being on the sidewalk, and though we had been talking for about five minutes by that point, no other cars had driven by. I remember feeling really special that a grown-up was paying so much attention to me, and talking to me like I was a big girl and not just some baby. He told me that I was such a smart and pretty girl, he bet I could come to the sidewalk and help him with something. He asked if I could give him directions to a road that was right up the streets. I told him I only knew the name of the road my house was on. He had a map sitting in the passenger seat and picked it up and asked me to just come look at it. That it didn't matter if I knew the name, he would read it to me and I could just tell him if he was reading the map right. I knew I wouldn't know the road, but I remember feeling so honored that this grown-up was asking me for help that I probably would have drawn a whole new map if he had asked. I got ready to jump down on the sidewalk and go to the roll-down window he was practically hanging out of before remembering I, I couldn't go on the sidewalk without permission. I told him I wasn't allowed on the sidewalk and I have, would have to tell my mom. He told me not to bother her as he was sure she was busy getting things ready for my birthday and it would only take a second for me to check. I put my toy down and sat down on the edge of the wall to climb down when my mom opened the front door. The guy peeled away so fast, I could see the mark on the curb where he had burned rubber. My mom asked what that was all about, and I told her he wanted to wish me a happy birthday and ask for directions. She told me it was time to come play inside. I forgot all about the incident until much later and I told a friend about it. We both concluded that the man probably meant to abduct May. So, fast forward to about a month ago, it occurred to me to look into abductions around that time in the area. I lived in New Hampshire, right on the border of Massachusetts. I was able to put together the year based on Jurassic Park's release dates and just look for cases from that summer. 
I was a bit surprised with what I found. In August, only a few short months after my run-in with this guy, a 10-year-old girl had been abducted in a town about 20 miles away. She was blonde with brown eyes, and I was blonde with blue eyes. They found her shoe on the sidewalk, and suspected that she had been snatched by someone in a car. Her remains were found in the woods a month or two later. Her killer was never found, and the case remains unsolved to this day. Whether that was just a coincidence or something more, to the random guy in the station wagon over 20 years ago. Let's not meet. He almost got me. I was 11 years old. I spent the night hanging out with my closest friend at the time. I left around 7 o'clock. She was about a 15 to 20 minute walk away from my house. It was the month of December, so it was icy and dark outside. While I was walking down the long sidewalk, I had to make a turn halfway. Across the turn down the sidewalk, I noticed a man further, way further down. He was alone at that moment. Ten seconds later, a four-door car drove up to him. It was a long street till my turn, so I watched him talk to whoever was inside the car. It sped off and he just stopped. Watching me walk. As I kept walking, all I heard was, Hey you! Come here! Stop! Hey you! I freaked out. I started walking faster and then noticed he started running towards me. I started running for my life. Since the ground was covered in snow and ice, all I literally thought was, please, God, don't let me slip. Mom, 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 please help me. I was crying as I was running. He caught up extremely fast. I kept looking back and noticed the car slowly driving behind him. As I ran, I felt his arm reach out and try to grab the hood of my sweatshirt. By God's grace, his hand slipped, and I ran a block trying to find a house with his lights on. I finally found one and banged at the door, almost ready to break in down to get in. The older couple finally answered. I ran inside explaining what happened. The husband then went outside to try and find him. When they went out, he saw the man standing at the end of the street staring at him. Then he ran off. My mom called the cops and pulled me out of school for four days afterwards, and we never found him. For a while after, I would buy flowers and a card and leave it on the couple's step, thanking them for saving my life. God only knows what would have happened if he got me and dragged me to the car. Let's never meet again. It should have been a nice morning walk. If this does not belong here, feel free to remove it. I moved into off-campus housing for the coming school year at the beginning of the month. And while my neighborhood isn't the safest in the city, there are other neighborhoods that are a lot worse. Also, places that are a no-go for walking at night are generally safe during the day. At 10.30 a.m., I left the house to go on a walk and explore the neighborhood. I headed down the main road that goes through this part of town and wanted to go into downtown. About a quarter of a mile from my street, I go to one of the rougher sections with some locally owned shops and apartment buildings on my side of the street and a sketchy gas station and a convenience store on the opposite side. The gas station and store are separate businesses and separated by a side street that ends on the main road. After checking traffic, I step off the sidewalk to get around a group of people who were standing there and watching an old building be torn down. Two women and a man. 
right as I stepped off. I heard someone shout, Hey! And looked over just in time to see a disheveled looking man running across the street from the gas station. He stepped up on the sidewalk right in front of me as I got back on, blocking my way and standing very, very close to me. His clothes were dirty, and he was missing a few of his front teeth. Hey, baby, what's up? What's going on? You, you, you got that from city name going on? Well, I'll be from other city about 20 minutes away and got that going on, you know what I'm saying? As he's getting in my face and spewing random nonsense at me, hitting on me all the while, he grabs my shoulder when I try to back away and tries several times to pull me close to him like he wants to hug me or do something else. Hey, why are you acting like you'd be scared? Grabby guy starts getting aggressive and grabbing at me. I froze, but just happened to look over and see one of the women in the group of three. I had passed, giving me a look before tapping on the shoulder of the guy she and the other woman were with. The other guy saw what was happening and came over to ask the grabby guy if he knew me. When good guy figured out grabby guy was harassing me, he started getting in grabby guy's face, telling him to leave me alone. Grabby guy was still close to me until good guy motioned for me to step back so he could get closer to grabby guy and they started arguing. Knowing that this could easily turn into a fist fight, I took the opportunity, while Grabby Guy was distracted, to run back up the street where I came from, scaling the whole hill in one giant sprint. I got to about three or four blocks away from where the incident happened, when I finally felt safe enough to stop running. When I turned and looked back, Grabby Guy was walking back across the street to the gas station, staring at me the whole time. I ran the rest of the way home. Guy Lurking in Shadows So, I've been reading this sub for a while now and figured I would share an encounter I had a few years ago. To preface, this happened while I was serving as a Mormon missionary a few years back. This encounter happened on an evening in the late 2010. I had been on my mission for about 18 months, six months from going home. If you know anything about Mormon missionaries, you'll know that they follow a regular schedule. People wake up at 6.30 in the morning, go out at 10, talk to people, teach people, help people out, etc. Until about 9 at night. Also, you'll know that they work in pairs, which is relevant here. On this particular November day, we had followed the schedule I laid out above. We were getting ready to wrap up, so we started biking home. It was probably around 8.30 p.m., when we came to a relatively major road in this area. As we prepared to cross, we noticed a woman walking towards us. Just a side note for the setting, this area was a bit run down. The recession had been hard on it, so while we were near a major intersection, most of the businesses were shut down, except for Jack in the Box and an office building. The point is, Despite being on what appeared to be a major intersection, there wasn't anybody else around. The woman approached us from the intersection, which from where we were standing was pretty well lit by the office building and streetlight. She was heading down the road, walking towards the next major intersection a quarter mile down the street. Between us and the intersection this woman was walking to was a long stretch of dark sidewalk. If I remember correctly, there were hedges along the right side of the sidewalk. Again, note that the stretch of sidewalk was dark. The only light present was from an office building behind us and street lamp above us. As this woman approached, I started to ask her how her evening was going. But before I could get even two words out of my mouth, she told me to fuck off. Okay, point taken. We hopped over the curb and got ready to cross the street to go home. I looked behind me one more time 
and looked at the woman as she walked down the sidewalk. Right then, a man jumped out of the hedges and blocked her path. She tried to move to the right. He quickly blocked her. She tried to move to the left. He quickly blocked her. Then he started grabbing her. She managed to get free and took a few steps backwards, but the man was undeterred. While this was happening, I hopped off my bike and started running at the guy. Note that at the time, I was 6'5 and about 240 pounds. As he approached the woman again, I dropped my shoulder into his chest and knocked him off his feet. The other missionary looked completely shell-shocked. I told him to walk the woman down the street while I kept the man here. He reminded me that missionary rule stated missionaries must remain within sight and sound of each other. I told him that didn't matter right now, just get her out of here. As the other missionary began walking down the street, the man had rolled over and stood up. I was now positioned in front of him with a dark sidewalk to my back. He was short, a little pudgy, and reeked of alcohol. He had long black hair and wore a brown leather coat. He made eye contact with me and immediately tried to get by me. I stood my ground and, like an offensive lineman defending a quarterback, shoved him backwards. He fell to the ground again. He stood up and tried again. I shoved him down again. He tried this a few more times before he realized how futile his attempts were. To this day, I'm grateful he wasn't carrying a knife or any other kind of weapon. After about five minutes of trying to get by me, he finally spoke. He said, I am the devil, and you're disrupting my work. Great. He repeated himself a few times. Each time he said that, I told him, I don't care who you are or what you're doing. I'm not going to let you pass me. Shortly thereafter, he just stood there mumbling to himself. I heard footsteps behind me. The other missionary was back. I asked him how the woman was doing. He said that she was shaken up, but she was close to her home. He got her address and phone number. She asked if we could visit her the next morning. Now that we knew she was safe, we walked back towards our bikes. As we prepared to cross the street again, a familiar voice started yelling. He said, Tall one! You will die in under two weeks. Assuming he was talking to me, I shouted back. Great! Looking forward to it. Then he said, Little one, you will die tomorrow. At that point, we crossed the street, hoping to be done with this guy. Luckily, that was the last we ever saw of him. I'm glad we were there that night because... I don't know what would have happened to that woman otherwise.